ADAS is embarking on a new project to highlight the diversity of people and experiences of those working in social care. A number of colleagues have been interviewed to explore the many different ways people take to leadership roles and the positive impact they are making. Positive representation matters. We hope that this series will inspire all of us to stand up and shout louder about the issues that matter to us the most. My name is Beverly Tarka. I'm currently the Director for Adults, Health and Communities at Haringey Council in North London. I find it a very vibrant, uh, diverse place to work and extremely rewarding. And I see it as an opportunity to give back to the community in which I live. What were the biggest barriers you faced in your journey to a leadership role? There's something about the history of uh, myself um, being a, a product of the Rindwash generation. So I don't think it's too excessive to talk about the trauma that was experienced and that how that played out in different ways, uh, not just externally, but also within the, the family sort of uh, environment and upbringing. That experience of trauma, that their experience also uh, instilled in me in, in terms of my abilities and my confidence uh, to actually, um, particularly in the work environment, uh, had uh, a, a really significant uh, impact on my career journey. But what I firmly believe is that the door was opened uh, by uh, line managers, mentors that I've had on my career journey, coaches, that really helped me to, to build confidence and to overcome some of the sort of characteristics that my um, uh, parents' generation actually experienced. What would you say are the biggest challenges you now face in a leadership role? Here in Haringey, as well as the uh, you know, the director. I always also have an equality, diversity, and inclusion hat on. So I'm the corporate lead for EDI. I chair the uh, EDI steering group. So there's something for me around uh, intersectionality is a really uh, significant theme in terms of the work that I try to do in my leadership role as chair of the steering group. And it's how we can bring people together to hear their voices. That leadership and understanding throughout the organisation is so important. So that is supported through training programmes, for example, around on uh, unconscious bias, around inclusivity and what that means. And we're really tr trying to build uh, an environment where people feel that they're able to bring their, their whole selves to work. What are the most important characteristics and attitudes an inclusive leader should have and show? I think... In my experience, it's really about how you act and an acknowledgement that actually, when, in terms of the additionality you get when you bring diverse leaders together, that you're going to have conflict at times. And also uh, be really conscious of the need to create an environment where people feel that they can actually bring their authentic self to work. And that's not, and that's not an easy thing to do. There is something around uh, being um, confident, I think, in encouraging uh, candid conversations, uh, an awareness in terms of confronting my own unconscious uh, and conscious biases, and the ability to be very open to feedback, uh, to be able to uh, make people feel valued in terms of the contributions they, they make, and it's, for me, it's not a static situation. It's very dynamic. It's almost transformational. What is a simple but often overlooked change senior leaders could implement to create a welcoming and inclusive work environment? It's really about having senior leaders having a real understanding of themselves. I've learned that it's okay to be uncomfortable, to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Understanding the injustice, the inequality that plays out in certain sections of our community and coming together to uh, actually understand how we can work together to do something about it. And there's just something around us being willing to give up some of that power from our professional base and to try to address some of those inequalities we have in our relationships with residents. If we really want to work side by side in our communities, we've got to support and invest in creating leaders within our communities as well. And the diversity is there. So, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a ready made pool, but it doesn't just happen. What piece of career advice would you offer those of us from traditionally marginalised or underrepresented backgrounds? 
So there is just something around uh, being confident. Uh, it doesn't just happen. But the more exposure you have, the more opportunities one has to build confidence. I can't underestimate the role that a mentor has played for me uh, throughout my career. Um, in, in, when you're in any sort of senior leadership uh, position, the burden and the load can be extremely heavy. And just by having that opportunity to offload and have those sort of reflective of conversations and you know reflective feedback, I found extremely invaluable. I would encourage anyone to try and build that culture within your organization. And if you find it really challenging, find allies that can support you in terms of challenging the norm.